If you're looking for a beautiful master plan community in the Lake Travis area, two popular choices are Sweetwater and Rough Hollow. Now, both communities are located very close to each other, so a lot of our clients are kind of torn between the two and which one is the right match. Now, I lived in Sweetwater for many years and my in-laws live in Rough Hollow, and so we love both neighborhoods. But in this video, I'm going to break down some of the key differences so you can determine which one is the right match for your family. So first of all, let's talk location. So both communities are located going out west to Highway 71, just past the Bee Cave Galleria. So a great thing about both neighborhoods is that you have easy access to all of the shopping and restaurants and amenities in the Bee Cave and Lakeway areas. Now, one thing that we liked about Sweetwater was that it is right off the highway and the community was designed to be kind of like a C shape. So it's really easy to get in and out. There's two exits. So we liked that we could be out of the neighborhood and on the highway in just a couple of minutes and it made it easy to get to where we need to be. Now, Rough Hollow is tucked back a little further from the highway. And it also has two entrances, but one is off of Highway 71, the other one is back into the section of Lakeway. So it may take a few extra minutes to get out of the neighborhood. It's a little more of a windier drive to get in and out, but you can still easily access the things in Bee Cave and in the Lakeway area. So now let's talk about amenities. So Rough Hollow is what I would call a lifestyle community. In fact, the people that usually buy there buy because they have fallen in love with all of the amenities that this neighborhood has to offer. So one thing of course is that it has lake access. So there is a beautiful clubhouse that has an infinity edge pool that overlooks the lake. You can uh, rent a boat down at the marina from Freedom Boat Club. You can also get a kayak, a paddleboard, or whatever you need to go out and enjoy being on the water. Now, my in-laws, my brother and sister-in-law and my nephew live in there, and that is my nephew's favorite thing is to go with his dad, get a kayak, and go out fishing on the lake. They've also discovered beautiful hiking trails. Some have, you know, creek beds and little waterfalls that are just so pretty to enjoy. And it just makes you feel like you're not really in the city or anywhere, but it's like you're on vacation. There's also two big clubhouses. The one I mentioned has the Infinity Edge Pool. It also has a beautiful restaurant called the Canyon Grill. There's a day spa where you can get facials, a massage, whatever you need a really nice gym with locker rooms. The second uh, clubhouse and amenity center has a, another pool with a floating river where you can just relax in an inner tube. There's also all kinds of sports courts there. So it's just a fun way to have an active lifestyle and just feel like, like I said, like you're on a vacation when you come home from work. Now, Sweetwater also has beautiful amenities. I love that the neighborhood is just gorgeous as you drive through it. It has just beautiful sidewalks. It feels like a park with the landscaping and everything. There are lots of hiking trails that my husband and I also enjoyed that would take you down into the canyons. We also discovered the creek beds, the waterfalls and stuff that you would see after hard rain. There are two clubhouses and both have pools. The front one is more family friendly with a splash pool and um, waiting area for small kids. The other one is two full size pools that's kind of overlooking the canyons. There's also a 24 hour fitness center. It's a little smaller, but I always was able to find a machine and have space to work out when I used it. And there's also sports courts in the front of the community. So the main difference is just not having that lake access. So if you're someone that really loves a beak on a boat, being out in the water all the time, then rough hollow might be something that you would pick instead of Sweetwater. Now, if you're like us and you're like, I don't really care about being on a boat or whatever, you can still be in Sweetwater and access the marina in rough hollow. It is open to the public. You can be a member of Freedom Boat Club without living in there. Now let's discuss the HOA. So with all those amenities, there comes a price tag. So with Rough Hollow, the HOA dues are definitely gonna be a lot higher than Sweetwater. They're almost double what Sweetwater is. So everyone has to be a member of the yacht club and the marina, regardless of whether you plan on using it or not. 
So that's currently around 200 or so dollars a month for kind of a minimum HOA due going into that rough hollow neighborhood. And within the neighborhood, there's sub communities. So if you're in one of the gated sections or one of the condo sections, then your HOA dues could be even higher than that. It might be 300, 400 or so per month. With Sweetwater currently, the HOA dues are less than 100 a month. You can still access all of the amenities, but it is cheaper again because you don't have that lake access that the Rough Hollow side is paying for. Now, tax rates are you know, pretty similar. Rough Hollow is actually a little bit less than the Sweetwater tax rate. So you might save a little bit more on the tax rate there, but again, you're paying a little bit more on HOA dues. Let's talk prices. This is a huge factor for a lot of our clients. So in Sweetwater, I just did a check of all of the homes that closed in the last year and the average sales price was a little over 800,000. Now in Rough Hollow, I did the same thing. I checked the last year and the average sales price was about 958,000. So Rough Hollow is definitely a little more expensive than Sweetwater. So if you're looking for a big, huge home in Sweetwater, your money will go a lot farther than if you tried to find that in Rough Hollow. So one of the things our clients have to kind of determine is, am I okay with a little bit smaller home in Rough Hollow just to stay within my budget? Or do I you know, not mind giving up the lake and those things because I'm not really gonna use them? and I can get the house that I want in Sweetwater instead. So just know that, like I said, the prices are definitely a little bit higher on the Rough Hollow side. Now, one of the things that's also great about Rough Hollow is that I feel like you're buying into a little bit more luxury community. There are definitely gated sections that are way up on top of the hills that have lake views. And some of those homes are you know, easily three to five million or so with these incredible views. So if you're buying in Rough Hollow, kind of at the bottom of the neighborhood, you've got those higher end homes that are also helping you bring your price up. In Sweetwater, some of the more expensive homes in the gated section right now are starting in the low like 1 million mark. They may go up to two and a half or so, but they're not anywhere near like the three, four, five million range that you might find in Rough Hollow. So just keep in mind, pricing is definitely a huge difference for our clients. But like I said, you know, you might be willing to sacrifice some things to get the lifestyle and the amenities that you truly want. So another thing that could sway your decision between Sweetwater and Rough Hollow is the elementary schools. So Rough Hollow actually has its own elementary school in the front of the community closer to Highway 71, and it's called Rough Hollow Elementary. Also, you have Lake Travis Middle School that's also in the front of the community. So it's very easy for kids in Rough Hollow to get to the elementary or middle schools. Some might even be able to bike or walk there depending on where your home is located. Now in Sweetwater, there is not an elementary school at this moment. And so that has been something that parents have complained about, but this neighborhood was just not designed in the original plans to have an elementary school and there's just not space to build one. So the kids in Sweetwater currently attend Rough Hollow Elementary, but in the past they also attended West Cypress Hills. And so that's kind of an unknown factor is that if you know the elementary schools get overcrowded, then at some point Sweetwater may get zoned to a different elementary school. It's also currently zoned to Lake Travis Middle. So regardless, you know, the kids are in Lake Travis, which overall have decent ratings, but there's just the unknown of that the elementary school boundaries could change at some point, depending on how crowded the schools get. Now let's talk about the views. Both communities have absolutely gorgeous rolling hills. You can get incredible views from Sweetwater. You're obviously not gonna see the lake from Sweetwater, but depending on where you're at in the backside of the community on the high parts of the hills, you can actually see the skyline of downtown Austin, which is pretty incredible. So a lot of our clients just fall in love with those big hilltop views. On the rough hollow side, it is possible to get a lake view it still has big dramatic rolling hills. And I would say that's probably the main thing that I love about both of those communities because a lot of the other neighborhoods just don't have that same topography as these two neighborhoods do. Now, if I had to say something negative on Rough Hollow, 
is that it does have those gigantic power lines that run through the community. So I always warn my clients about those because some houses have a view where you just walk outside and all you see is this giant power line. There are also some that are located really close to like the base of them. I mean, it's still probably hundreds of feet away to be safe, but you know, that could be a real turnoff if you walk outside your home and you're like, okay, here's this giant tower. No one really wants to look at that. So I always try to look on a map and figure out where a house is. If my client has marked it as a favorite, I try to just go out there and see like, what is it facing? What kind of view do you get? Because those power lines can definitely be something that's a turnoff. Now finally, something that I love about both neighborhoods is that they really have a strong sense of community. So both of them have social activities that occur throughout the year. There's things that are very family friendly, you know, oriented towards children, but there's also things for, you know, people who are empty nesters or single or whatever to enjoy as well. So both communities I feel like are more connected than other places. You can definitely make a lot of friends here and you can find people who share common interests and things that you can enjoy. So like I said, I love both of these neighborhoods. I feel like you can't really go wrong investing in either neighborhood. It really just depends on price point, the lifestyle and the amenities that you love. If you have further questions about either neighborhood, drop it in the comments below or call us to schedule a tour. Thank you.